Hello, everyone. My name is Dale Danker. I'm the president here at Local 514 in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I want to kind of give you a, a what's what's been going on video just to talk about basically two two little items. Um, but before I say that, I wanna I wanna say thank you um, to all those that reached out to me. Um, lost my dad in October and. Then I lost my mom kind of unexpectedly here uh, January 16th. So for those that reached out to me, I, I appreciate it. Um, we all go through it. Uh, if you haven't gone through it, you're going to go through it. And it's tough. But what I wanted to um, make this little video and talk about was um, how we get our information. So there's um, seems to be there's a lot of different ways that we can get information of what's the union up to, what's it doing, what's it going to do, what have they done. So we have meetings every month. I think there's three right now on the books, and they rotate between Monday and Thursday, try to make it more available for everybody to come. Um, there's a union bulletin boards in your area, and you can search those out. They typically have the officer's name in them and when the meeting notices are and what the agenda is for the meetings and, and some some information that stays in there constantly that you can get to phone numbers and people um we have the website al's sitting right past my camera here and he posts stuff on facebook um we have the grievance office you can call and talk to an officer katie's down here or secretary you can call down here um monday through friday seven to four and uh follow the switchboard to get get to an officer you can call me 24 7 uh and I'll, if I can't answer, I'll call you back. Um, but then there's also social media, which is not something that we, other than Facebook, I don't know if Al uses Twitter, Twitter or not, but um, there's a there's a WhatsApp out there. And there are people that post on WhatsApp and represent what they're putting out there as if it's coming from the union. Um, if you're not elected by the membership, to represent the membership, then it's not something that's sponsored through the union, through your representatives. So just know that if you are use WhatsApp to get all your information or get some of your information, that it might be incorrect because I occasionally get sent screenshots of some things on WhatsApp and it's not exactly accurate. All right, now on to the real reason this video is being made. Um, when the company here in Tulsa chooses to put bid areas together or take them apart, they're using in the contract book, Article 9. And Article 9 is filling of vacancies in the index up front. It's in the MNR book, it's in the MLS book, it's in the MCT book. Um, 9FF, if you go to Article 9, you go through all the alphabet, and then it starts repeating. After Z would be A, A, B, B, C, C, and then you go on to FF, Article 9, FF. In the MNR, 9FF. In the MLS, but in the MCT, it's Article 9F. Temporary transfers rolls to G. A little bit different with the MCTs. They work off a of desk. They're all in one location there um, down at uh, MOC. So I'm going to read a little bit out of 9FF. Temporary transfer provision. So when the company determines there is a surplus of employees in one bid area and a corresponding shortage in another, they can use 9FF paragraph 3 and they can send people from one area to another. Now, they, I, I filed a presidential grievance quite some time ago on this to where I think that they're um, pushing the, the, the bounds of 9FF a bit too far. So now, um, when they want to change things, which they change things constantly, they never allow time for things to settle down, for the dust to settle, and for guys to get... Um, can, build some consistency with the crews, with the, with the work that they're doing. So um, I'm starting to think that sometimes maybe the goal of the company is to uh, not put airplanes out on time in Tulsa so they can 
ship them off to South America or somewhere. It's, but they're taking the rules of this contract and they're utilizing them how they see fit. And we um, bear the burden of proof and to file the grievances and to try to get in front of an arbitrator. Um, there is several things that are on the list of the association meeting that I went to in Phoenix that are um, lined up to go to arbitration. But if we get into early openers for the for the contract negotiations in September of this year, I doubt that the association is going to, or the company, would want something to go into arbitration or in front of a mediator when it's going to be talked about in negotiations. So my presidential grievance of 9FF, I doubt will get in, get in front of an arbitrator before it gets talked about in negotiations. So they're going to shut down the bid area called Hangar 5 and 6 and turn it into two bid areas, 5 or 6, like they did in 1, 2, and 3. Separated them. Um, and there's a lot of reasons that I'm told by the company for doing that to try to build efficiencies, but the reason they say they're not efficient is because too many shift swaps. Too many shift swaps, and they don't know who's coming. They don't know who's going. They want to move a guy off of a narrow body and put him on a wide. Well, they don't want to move a guy off a narrow body and have him swap and go on a wide body. They want to trim down how many people can shift swap. So by doing this, they're going to eliminate this big bid area, go to 5 and 6, and under the provisions of 9FF, paragraph 3, I filed a grievance on it, but they're utilizing three to do that. Now, if they do that, I'm getting phone calls, and guys are concerned that somehow the union's going to allow them to do away with shift swaps. Shift swap is in Article 15. Article 15 of your contract book, whichever one that you your classification falls in article 15 it was a negotiated item that's not getting done away with now they're trying to eliminate it by making the bid areas smaller so let's talk about the last thing right now in five and six with it being one bid area if i was a crew chief on say 6c and they wanted me to go over to 5c Danker, you and your crew, you're finished doing whatever it is you're doing. The seats are on, your cargo's lined, your wing panels are put back on. Or maybe they don't like Dale Danker, and they don't like Dale Danker and his crew, and they're going to send me over within my bid area to go work on an airplane in Hangar 5. How do they do that currently? That's one big bid area. It's a job assignment. So it's a job assignment. Off you go. Even though on your pick sheet you bid that location. There's nothing to prevent them on a day-to-day -day giving you a job assignment and going over to Hangar 5. What, what's the difference now that they're going to split it up? The difference now is that because they are going to use 9F paragraph 3 to make it a separate bid area, now if they want to move workers from Hangar 6 to Hangar 5, in my scenario, Danker, you're the crew chief, take you and your crew, go over from... 5, 6C over to 5C. They have to follow paragraph 2. I've talked to their HR guy about it and just to find out his interpretation of it and it's pretty clear just like mine. If they want to move people over there, they have to. It says the company shall, the word shall. They have to do it. Solicit volunteers in seniority order. So if you're on my crew, they can't just come and say, Danker, you're the crew chief that has nothing to do. You're going over there. And they can't take my crew and go over there. They have to, by seniority order, to go work in another bid area within their station for which they are qualified. In the event of insufficient volunteers, nobody wants to volunteer, the company will assign employees in the inverse seniority order. And they can only be for 28 days. And they can do it without our consent, the union's consent, the union leader's. If they want to extend it beyond 28 days, it says in here, the local president must mutually agree on the terms of the extension. So, 
I've taken a lot of phone calls. They can split it up. I'm not happy about it because they're just doing end arounds with the shift swap that they don't like. In the uh, engine shop, in the, out in the test cell, um, they use 9FF3 to split the test cell up because they didn't like the overtime rules that they negotiated. And the overtime rules state that within the bid area, you will go to lowest hour and ask them if they want to work overtime. But in since March 26, 2020, what have they not done? They don't have everybody trained. It's something they said that they would do. They would get the folks within the bid area trained. So if everybody in the test cell was trained, why would they need to ask five people that are low on the overtime hours, one through five, to get to number six and number seven as somebody that can run a motor? So they haven't done the things that they said they were going to do. So what do they do? Oh, that's not working for us. We're tired of doing that. Let's 9FF3. Let's split it back out. And we don't have to run overtime. Those guys can stay there. And these guys up here will go up here. And, and maybe that works out great for all the workers that are over there. I'm just telling you, they're in Tulsa. And if you go ask union guys out in the system, everything's hunky-dory. Everything's fine. This is not a problem. But we're a big base. And there's a lot of um, challenges when you're running as many classifications as we have as much detailed work as we're doing, you need to stay, in my opinion, they should let crew chiefs know what they're responsible for, have a crew that can get proficient and efficient at doing that work, and let them try to do that from airplane to airplane. This, um, everyone's a general mechanic and can do anything at any given time. Doesn't work so well here in Tulsa, but they, I'm not sure that they care about that. Do your best while you're out there splitting up five and six. They've split up other areas. I know it's going to interrupt your life because you have shift swap partners and you might go to that area and your partner might not. And I continue to tell the company, when are you going to quit hitting us in the head and telling us that we're going to keep beating you to morale improves? I mean, I think morale is directly tied to your pro productivity levels, but I don't think that they're concerned about that. So do the best you can take care of each other. If management's on the floor, I'm not for sure why everybody that's a worker out there doesn't know when management's out, out walking around. Do yourself a favor. Take care of your neighbors. Um, if you're getting your information off of WhatsApp, it may or may not be accurate. Everyone take care of yourself. And as always, if you need me, need to get a hold of me, it's 918-636-6089. Pick out a membership meeting if you would this year and please come to it. I'd like to see your face and hopefully I'll see you out on the floor from time to time. Thank you.